In the early hours of the morning, two exhausted firefighters walk into a diner after working all night. A waitress working a midnight shift at the diner decides to pay for their food, but the firemen decide to take real action. The fire raged so much that the night looked like daytime. Bright yellow flames stretched out to the sky as if they wanted to consume it too. The warehouse was already completely burned. There was nothing to save. At that point, the firefighters only aimed to keep the fire from spreading. Tim Young and Paul Hullings worked tirelessly with soot on their faces and their clothes soaked with sweat. It was a huge fire and all hands were needed on deck. New fire trucks were coming by the minute and men jumped out of them, running towards the warehouse with hoses. Several media outlets surrounded them, trying to capture as much footage of the disaster as they could. Tim wiped the sweat off his forehead and looked up at the warehouse. The fire was coming under control, but they couldn't leave just yet. News reporters swarmed the scene, trying to get better pictures and interview the firefighters. When Tim and Paul passed by the fire chief, he was already in action. As the men packed up their gear, a reporter made them stop and give her an interview. Although they were exhausted, they agreed and answered her questions. Tim and Paul were tired and hungry. The sun was not yet up by the time they were free to go. They stopped at a diner to get some food before heading home to get some rest. When they entered the diner, they took their seats and waited for the waitress to come and take their orders. Liz Woodward, a waitress at the diner, saw the two firefighters enter the diner. She took one look at their dirty, tired faces and felt bad for them. Strangely, they looked familiar to her, even though she was sure this was their first time at the diner. She wondered where she knew them from as she rushed to their table to ask for their order. Paul asked for the biggest cup of coffee the restaurant had, along with some breakfast items. The waitress took both of their orders and set out to get their food. While getting the coffee, she overheard their conversation. From their appearance and their uniforms, she already figured out that they were firefighters. From their conversation, she understood that they had fought a fire all through the night, and her suspicions were confirmed when she heard them talk about the warehouse. Liz was following the story of the burning warehouse. No wonder the men were familiar. She had seen a short interview on an online media outlet with both of them at the scene of the fire. She quickly made their breakfast and brought it to them. Touched that these men risked their lives almost every day for the sake of others, Liz wanted to do something special for them. She just didn't know what. Finally, an idea struck her. She decided to brighten up their day by paying for their food. When it was time to bring them the check, she simply passed a note to them. The men were confused at what she did, but when they read the note, they began to tear up. The firefighters were so touched as they read the note over and over again. They called Liz over and thanked her profusely. This was what the note said. Your breakfast is on me today. Thank you for all that you do, for serving others, and for running into the places everyone else runs away from. No matter your role, you are courageous, brave, and strong. Thank you for being bold and badass every day. Fueled by fire and driven by courage, what an example you are. Get some rest. They were amazed at her kind-heartedness and generosity. Here she was, a waitress being paid minimum wage and working the night shift. For her to be at the diner by 5.30 in the morning, she was probably there all night. She herself must have been tired, yet she didn't hesitate to show kindness. Two days later, on her way to work, Liz got the odd feeling that people were staring at her. As she strolled the brief distance from her apartment to the diner where she worked, she noticed several people glance at her, then down at their phones and back at her once more. While their antics amused her, with their heads bobbing like ping pong balls between players, she also couldn't shake the worry that something dreadful had occurred. She quickened her pace until she reached the diner. Upon opening the front door, she instinctively took a step back, momentarily thinking she had wandered into the wrong restaurant. Glancing up at the signboard, she confirmed it was indeed the 130 diner, her workplace. She entered once more and was astounded by the crowd of people inside. They were a busy restaurant, but she couldn't remember a day when they had that many customers. 
every single table was occupied and some people standing outside seemed to be waiting to enter the restaurant. Liz was still dazed when she got to the staff room to change into her waitressing uniform. Once she finished dressing, she tied up her hair and stepped out to face the day. As she went from table to table, serving the customers, she got the same strange look she got on her way to work. When she started her shift, the first thing she noticed was the number of new customers. There were always regulars, the really busy people who could not cook for themselves. Those people came in the morning, had lunch delivered to their offices, and also ate dinner there. Then, there were those who exclusively came to the diner for their lunch breaks because their offices were close by. Another category of customers were those that came in every once in a while. Maybe they were exhausted and didn't really feel like cooking that day. Perhaps they had friends over and just wanted takeout. No matter what category the customer fell under, Liz could confidently say that she had served them at least once before. For some reason, that day, more than half of the customers were new. Liz had never seen them before. Of course, it didn't affect the way she served them. Her job was physically exhausting because she had to be on her feet for hours on end. It could also be emotionally draining to deal with rude and entitled customers. But Liz always tried to put in her best at work. Another peculiar thing that happened was that the new customers tipped like crazy. One particular customer's tip made her jaw drop. Liz went home with a skip in her step. She was tired, but also happy that the restaurant made more money than ever before and that the tips were huge. When she got home, she greeted her siblings and kissed her mom on the cheek. She placed her bag on the counter and made her way to her father's room. Pausing in front of the door, she leaned against it, seeking support. Before facing him, she needed a moment to gather her strength. Quietly, she turned the doorknob, cautious in case he was asleep. Her intuition proved correct. Her father was sprawled on the bed, unmoving, with only his chest rising up and down. Every time Liz saw her dad, she teared up. Her heart was heavy as she looked down at him. One would think that her father was just a peaceful sleeper and didn't move a lot in his sleep. But the reason he was so still was because he couldn't move. Liz's dad was a quadriplegic. Years ago, Liz was just a regular young woman with plans for her future. But all those plans came to a halt when her dad suffered a brain aneurysm, which was followed by two strokes. Liz remembered that day like it was yesterday. To her, it was the day all her family's problems began. The doctor had proclaimed that Liz's father was in critical condition and would probably never walk again. When she and her family were allowed to see her father, Liz saw that the doctor was not only right in his judgment, but he understood a lot of things. Not only was her father unable to walk, but he couldn't lift his arms, he couldn't talk, and he couldn't do anything. Liz cried like she had never cried before. Her heart shattered into a million pieces when she saw the state her father was in. Her dad, whom she once thought to be invincible and so full of life and strength, was reduced to a simpleton. He had become quadriplegic and needed around-the-clock care. He could not do anything on his own. He couldn't feed himself, he couldn't speak, and he had difficulty communicating. Her mom decided to move Liz's dad to the house so they could take care of him. Those first few months were a difficult time for the family. Their dad was the sole breadwinner, and with his condition, he couldn't hold a job anymore. This led to serious financial strain on the family. Coupled with the hospital bills and the cost of treatment, they quickly got into debt. They couldn't afford a nurse, so they had to do everything themselves. Liz and her siblings had to learn things that medical students didn't even know until their senior year. The learning process was tough, and many times she got things wrong and got scolded. Tension was high in Liz's family during that period. Now and then, arguments would break out in different parts of the house. Occasionally, someone would neglect their responsibilities to help their dad, leading to arguments. There were times when someone would forget to feed him, bathe him, or change his diapers, much to their mom's frustration. And those were the big things. It was important for them to take care of their father. In fact, it was their number one priority. They deserved to be scolded if they neglected him for a second. But what really grated Liz's nerves were the petty arguments. 
the arguments about wearing each other's shoes and clothes and eating what another person left in the fridge were very inconsequential. They were secondary to the big problems in their lives. Liz finally had enough when her mother's health started declining. After witnessing a panic attack her mom had, Liz made her check her blood pressure and it was through the roof. All the stress from treating her husband and dealing with her unruly kids was making her sick. Liz angrily called for a family meeting and began scolding everyone. They knew they had to act better and apologize to each other and their mom. Since that day, things had gotten better in their home. They were still in debt and their dad was still sick, but they got closer and everybody took their responsibilities seriously. The older siblings found jobs and started working tirelessly so they could contribute to paying the bills. Things were still difficult, but they were handling it better. In recent times, Liz's dad had gotten somewhat better. He was starting to regain his speaking abilities and could communicate better. The family thought it would be nice to get him a wheelchair accessible van so he could at least get out of the house sometimes. At the time, the van cost $17,000 and Liz had started a GoFundMe page for it. Not many people had donated, but Liz didn't lose hope. As she brushed her father's hair, she promised him quietly that she would get the van and improve his life by all means. The following day, Liz was shocked when random people started greeting her on the street. It started small, with one or two people stopping to say hello when they walked past her. Eventually, some people even asked to take pictures with her. She refused politely because she was so confused. Why would anyone want to take pictures with her? It's not like she was a celebrity or somebody important. One of her co-workers burst in and showed her a Facebook post while she was getting dressed in the staff room. A post had been made about her, the diner, and how she had paid for their meal as well as the meal of their friend. In the post, the person praised her in her kind heart and encouraged people to visit the diner and tip generously. The person posted a picture of the note she gave to the fireman who had come in a few days ago and Liz realized that the owner of the post was one of the firemen. She finally understood why the diner suddenly had new customers and why people were recognizing her on the street. Paul and Tim had decided to help the kind waitress by promoting her place of work. They made a post on Facebook and showed the world how kind she was to them making sure to add the name of the diner, telling their friends to eat there, and tip generously. Soon, they came across Liz's profile and saw for themselves exactly how difficult her life was. Liz documented her struggles with taking care of her father and asked for financial assistance to buy him the van. The firefighters' hearts broke when they found out about her situation. Not only was she a stressed out waitress, but she also had big responsibilities at home. The money she used to pay for their meal could have been used for more important things, yet she did it anyway. That's why these men decided to quickly take real action. They made another post on Facebook, but this time they let the world know that the wonderful waitress who had helped them previously needed financial assistance. They shared the link to the GoFundMe account and asked people to help in any way they could. It went viral once more, and people from all over the country even the world, started contributing to the cause. Liz was thankful for what the firefighters did. She contacted them and thanked them very much for posting about the diner and telling people about it. Liz hadn't even checked her GoFundMe account at that point, but when she finally did, she almost fell to her knees. Tears filled her eyes as she looked at the numbers on the screen. She only needed $17,000, but the account had an outstanding balance of $86,500. Liz could not believe her eyes. The money was way more than she expected. It was more than enough to buy her dad the van and for the daily essentials she and her family so desperately needed. Luckily, they didn't have to buy the van themselves. The story went viral online and caught the attention of the owner of a specialty car company called Mobility Ventures. They donated an MV1 to the family and lifted more financial strain off their backs. Afterwards, Liz and the firefighters got invited to different talk shows, and Liz's family was even given thousands of dollars on one of those talk shows. The family was in a better place than they were before, and it was all thanks to the firefighters. 
The beautiful thing about the story is that Liz didn't know that it would end this way. She didn't pay for the firefighters' meal because she was expecting them to do anything in return. Her act of kindness, though seemingly small, had a profound impact on her life and that of her family. Stories like this give us hope for humanity and tell us that even in a world full of corruption and negativity, we can still make the choice to be kind, no matter our own circumstances. If you have wholesome stories like this, we'd love to hear them. Share them with us in the comments and watch out for the next video. Thanks for watching.